you, God, that we are royalty, that we have destiny, God, that we have been set free, and that we are going to change the world. And we can do that all through you, God. That's the only way we can, Lord. Please give us your feet and your hands, God. Let us love people the way you love them, Lord. We just want to move and work through you, God. We thank you so much for the things you are doing in our lives and the things that you are planning on doing here this evening, God. Um, Pastor Bob prayed in the office that we just, we want to come to you like children, God, and that um, we just want to hear your voice and we just want to know who you are. And we don't want to ask why anymore. We just want to come to you as little children, God. And that is my prayer. That is my prayer, God. I want to come to you as a child, God. We love you, God, so much, and we just give you this evening, Lord. I thank you so much for this offering, God. Please bring blessings onto every person that's giving, and bring, and bring blessings onto everyone that is unable to give this evening, God. We lift up our pastor to you, Lord, as he shares your words, God, and um, we just ask that you bless him and uh, bless every word that comes out of his mouth, God. We ask this on your name, Jesus. Amen. so much, Lord God, for what you've been doing the last few weeks. Lord God, you're so good. You're so awesome. Lord God, I've just uh, kind of felt like you've taken me in a whole different direction, even as a pastor, Lord Jesus. And it's okay to say services have been good, Lord God, because I know that they've been you. It's not a prideful thing at all, Lord Jesus, to thank you for what you're doing, Lord God, and the words that you're giving me and the things that you're showing me, Lord God, out of your word. I'm so humbled, Lord Jesus so blessed and it's just been an awesome 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 journey with you Lord Jesus so give it all to you and I thank you Lord God somebody tell me what last week's message was titled anybody know remember the intervention some of you are going oh yeah now I remember <laughs> not in a hurry tonight the roads are not bad so we are not in a hurry if you're in a hurry, well, then uh, if I go too long, I'm sure you'll exit because that's what you guys do best. <laughs> and I mean that all is in fun. The message tonight is called Life Unexpected. Over the last few days, uh, I got on Netflix and I've been watching this show called Life Unexpected. And I was sitting in my man cave and I, I was thinking about this show. How many would say right now, your life is totally unexpected of what you thought it was going to be. 
How many would say, it's not going the way I want it to go? Amen. How many would say, I am in such a blessed place from where I was? Amen. How many would say, last year was last year, this is this year, and I'm going to move forward in Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Well, I began to think a little bit about my testimony, and it's really strange that you're here to, tonight, Kurt. No, it's not. <laughs> because Kurt's been a big part of my life for many years, and Kurt knows most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about tonight. But, and I'm not talking about my life at all. I'm talking about the transformation that Jesus Christ has. Amen? Amen. See, some of you think you've got it all figured out. And that you got it all right, and most of us would say, I have no some of us would say, I have no clue who even God is. And a lot of us are a lot of the other people are sitting here going, I just wish you would shut up so we could go home. But I'm not done until I'm done. But here's the thing: I was watching this show, and this show was about this young girl. It was on like in 2011, and they took it off. It was, a, it was on Netflix, and there's like 24 episodes of this show. And there's a lot of things in life that are in this show. There's the typical uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll in this show. And, and some would say, well, Pastor Bob, I can't believe you're watching it. Well, I'm, here's where I'm at with this. It brought back a lot of things that I've been through with my oldest daughter. Because my oldest daughter was a foster kid, so we adopted her. And this is about a young girl. Has anybody ever seen this show called Life Unexpected? About this young girl, she's probably 16, 17 years old. She's still in school, um, looking for life. She's trying to figure out who she is. And she comes along, Life Unexpected, been through foster care, been through the scene that's the scene of, of foster care, seen parents come in all about the money, seen the bad parts of what, what goes on, and, and she's going into court to become emancipated. Trust me, go with me on this little journey. You guys with me? Alright? So she wants to become emancipated, and somehow through this little journey, she finds her real parents. And I began to think about what God has done in my life and, and how I've had awesome parents. They drive me crazy at times, but I had a really good childhood. This girl in the show, sorry mom, this girl in the show didn't know who she was her whole life. And now she's like 15, 16 years old or whatever she is in the show, still in high school, and she is just trying to figure out who she is. She comes across her parents. Now you would all think, well that's a great thing. Yeah. It's an awesome thing. She's got a real parents now. Oh, it's just going to be wonderful. The cherubs are going to sing and it's just going to be great. You know, hallelujah. You know, choruses are going to go off. The angels are going to come down. But it ends up totally the opposite. Mom's a total mess. Her dad's an alcoholic. Her mom's messed up. The real dad has rich parents and bought him everything his whole life. And here's this girl, and she comes in and she thinks, you know what, oh, this is great, my real mom's going to take me in, and she's going to, it's just going to be wonderful. This girl's life is a mess. I begin to think about me at this point. So I did what every dad does who has an adopted daughter. This gets a little funny. I'm sitting here at 2 in the morning after like the fourth episode, and I'm not saying anything bad about Julie. If you know Julie, this will be funny, and if you don't, please don't think I'm being mean to my daughter. Because if she was here, I would still share this. She knows I would. So I'm, I'm bawling in front of the TV, crying my heart out, going, maybe I've messed up with Julie. Oh, Lord, there's been some things I could have done differently as a father. And, and you know, I, uh, I texted her this four-paragraph beautiful text at 2 a.m. <laughs> Julie, I messed up. Please forgive me. I want you in my life. I love you. I, 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 I really want to be a good dad. And I'm really changing. And, and I know I'm prideful and arrogant. And I know that I think I've got it all together. Because that's what parents do. They think they've got it all together. And we don't. Do we, Kurt? I'm going to use you a lot tonight. Is that okay? All right. So... 
So I write my daughter this text, two paragraphs long. So I'm waiting like for 25 minutes for her to text me back, thinking, you know, this is going to be the start of something great. It's going to be awesome. We're going to meet at Burger King and we're going to run to each other and throw arms around each other. And it's going to be wonderful. God, wake up, son. Exactly. Then I woke up, Chuck. Yeah. So, so I'm sitting there, I wrote this, and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be wonderful. My daughter gets up the next morning about 7 o'clock and she texts me, okay, love you too. <laughs> You missed it by that much. You missed it by that much. Or whatever. So I share all that to say my life is unexpected. But here's the cool thing: if your life is unexpected, you've only got one where one place to turn, and that's Christ. If your life is unexpected right now and things just aren't going your way, you've got one place to go, and that's up. Because it could be all downhill from here if we don't trust in God. So I began to think about my life unexpected. My life is unexpected in so many awesome ways. <coughs> so I began to think about what I could what I could preach about tonight. And I began to think about all these really cool things. And my message started off at the beginning of the week on how we're all soldiers in God's army. And how we need to lift one another up and help one another. And I began to think about the message from last week, the intervention. And I begin to think about some of the scriptures that I used. And I begin to think about, again, how good God is. So how many would say, you know, even though I'm in a rough spot right now, I still worship an awesome God. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't understand where I'm going, but i got a good God. So I began to think about this, and I began to go, Lord, where do you want me to go with this? And this is where I came up with. And I'm going to use some of the scriptures. <coughs> that I've used in the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months, the last couple of years, because they're my favorite scriptures. Jeremiah 29 11 just basically says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. That sounds great, right? But see, Christians go, well, that sounds wonderful. And it does. But we as believers go, that's just wonderful and great, but it doesn't always go the way you want it to go. So therefore, the plans that God has aren't your plans. See, because in this house right now, I've talked about this, and I see such awesome, awesome people. I think about you a lot, Chris. I do. And I think about how awesome you are on the first day I met you. And I had, this was not in my notes, okay? But man, God's got so much for you, man. And God loves you. I look around and I look at it like Paul, and I think about him a lot. I love you too. And I think about Chuck, and I think about Eric, and I think about all of you guys, and I think about how awesome God's, how awesome, how, how awesome the plans that God has for you that could come into motion in any day if you just allow God. thought about my life unexpected of going this way. What I expected about this time is I should not be here. The things that I went through and the things I did before I came to Jesus, I should be dead. And I'm still here. And I'm still breathing. I think about addiction in so many different ways. I think about how, how um, awful it can be to be addicted to anything. The only thing I'm addicted to at this point is uh, probably coffee and lots of food. Yeah. Uh, but it's an addiction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But i got to tell you, my life unexpected is an awesome life. Because the life that the devil had planned for me was death. Yep. The party lifestyle that I was in was fun. I don't know who this is for tonight, but I gotta tell you, my life unexpected goes like this. I got a beautiful wife, I got four beautiful kids, I got two great grandbabies. Not great grandbabies, 
grandbabies. I got an awesome church that I get to look out every week and some awesome people that come in here. Most of you shouldn't even be in church. The devil had it his way. I'm a man of God. I'm not an alcoholic. Some would say, well, you're always an alcoholic. I'm sorry I beg it different with you. Amen. I was Amen. delivered from drugs and alcohol, and I never going to call myself an alcoholic. I was a drug user, but I'm no longer a drug user. Never going to use drugs again. I have a nice house. I have two nice... Life unexpected? Some of you need to get into the life unexpected. Take a journey that you've never taken before. Do some things you've never done before, like totally trust in God. Got real quiet. A life unexpected. Been in many bands, jammed with many people. That would have never happened if I'd have kept up the lifestyle I was in. Because me and Kirk both know it's hard to remember notes at this, this age. It's, it's hard to remember how the song goes. It's hard to remember how fast or how slow it's supposed to go. And you get your band members at 25 years old are looking at you, that's way too quick, P-Bob. <laughs> <laughs> or like tonight, the last song that most of you don't know, there was parts I was supposed to break off, but I couldn't even hold on to my drumstick because I had arthritis in my thumb so bad, I couldn't even hit the snare. But it's better than the alternative. I said it's better than the alternative. Amen. Amen. That's right. I am loved by God. Not a prideful thing. God loves me. I'm realizing, at, at, when, on 49 in May, I'm realizing how much God really loves me. I'm realizing for the first time how much God really loves me. I'm realizing that it's more than I ever thought. It's more than I've ever experienced before. I'm realizing that there's no, I'm, never, I'm not bound by anything other than food and coffee, as I said. <laughs> but I don't have anything that I have to worry about death every time I use it anymore. I don't, have, I don't have to worry about where my life is going. I don't have to worry about doing anything that's out of God's will. Because i got to tell you, I'm so scared of messing up. I don't want to mess up. So therefore, I keep my eyes on the cross. I keep my eyes on my God. Because I love what I have. I love that I'm healthy. and I love that I have Jesus in my life. I love that God has transformed my mind. I love it that I was once... I was once bound, but now I'm on free. I know the plans that God has declared for me because He's shown me everything that I'm going to do. And guess what? It's this. Because the day that this place crumbles to the ground... I will still be out preaching the gospel to somebody. Might be like the book of Eli, where I'm going to be walking around in some kind of like uh, weird costume and sharing Jesus Christ. But I, I'll tell you what, I love what I do. I have peace and joy. Some of you act like you have peace and joy all the time, but you're miserable. Why are you miserable? Because you're outside of the what God wants for you. I'm talking from experience. The whole time that I was addicted was the whole time that I was miserable. I thought I was happy. I thought I had it all together. I thought everything was wonderful. It was always the down times. Somebody say amen. It was always the times that I was coming down or the bed was spinning out of control. Some of you will get that later. You know, the bed spins. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those were wonderful times where you can't even go to sleep because your bed's spinning so bad that all you want to do is stop! And I'm not making light of it at all. It, it, it was bad. These were bad times. Someone just say, Pastor Bob, and I don't want you to say amen because last week we talked about that. Don't just say amen to say amen. Say amen because you're believing that what I'm saying is, is, is checking in your spirit. See, God's called some of you, God has called some of you, as, as I look out over this audience, I was telling Ron before we started tonight, Ron, you're more than a bass player. Chaz, you're more than a guitar player. Deanna's more than what Deanna sits back there and does. 
Deanna's more than just a preacher on Tuesday. Deanna's more than just my wife. <laughs> Deanna's got a calling on her life. And if I ever pull her away, pull her away from that calling, she better run. Because she better worry about what Jesus has for her instead of what her husband is. And so that goes against probably every teaching you've ever heard. I gotta tell you, I love the Lord so much that I'm willing to let my, to give up my life for it. And I don't know honestly if some of you were standing in front of somebody that said either believe or do you believe? Do you have a relationship with Jesus or you're going to die? Which would you do? I don't know if we can honestly answer. And I, I, I honestly, I've got to tell you, I, I feel confident in my spiritual walk that I'm okay with myself knowing that, yeah, I'll pull the stinking trigger. I'm going home. That sounds weird to some of you. I've laid down my life for this. I've laid down my life for Jesus Christ, not Broken Chains Church. Sometimes it feels that way, though. <laughs> so I began to think about my life unexpected. My whole stick of life was unexpected. There's not a day that goes by that it's not an adventure. Some days are good, some days that are bad. But I can tell you this much, I know that the plans that God has for me are prosperous. Because no matter what, I'm able to, even when the, I have problems and situations that I don't understand, I still am able to hit my knees and go, hey God. Never have to worry about my next fix or my next high. I only have to worry about I only have to worry about where I'm going and what I'm doing. And, and when I get up in the morning, I trust in my Lord Jesus and I give it all to Him and I say, God, today's the day I pick up my cross. Today's the day I'm going to serve you. And in the last couple of months, I've got to tell you, I'm not even the same pastor I was six months ago. Deanna's not the same wife she was six months ago. She's better. She's an awesome mom. We serve Jesus together. We have a ministry together of reaching out and touching people. I can't believe Bob Lamb. Do you know how many days I have to get up and pinch myself and look across the hall and get inside and look and believe? Can, you guys have to fathom this just for a second. Go with me on a journey. This isn't about me, but think about this for a minute. Ex-alcoholic has a church. You with me? Ex-alcoholic yeah. has a church yeah. preaching to freaky people on Friday night. <laughs> Ex-alcoholic has a store across the hall that I'm able to give out food and clothes. We have a church that has a shower in it. Some of you are going, amen, you need a shower right now, Viva. And I would say, yes, I do. <laughs> Some of you, can you look back, can you look ahead for about five years for a moment? Can you imagine if you gave your hearts to Jesus, if you seriously got right, got ready, got infected with the, with the cross, if you seriously fell in love with Jesus Christ, can you imagine where you could be? Can you imagine if you could get up every day and just say, I'm a freak for Christ. I'm a true follower of the living God. Wow. Wow. See, because I'm the guy that stands up here every week going, I can't believe this is my life. <coughs> I can't believe I get to do this. And I'm still in love with doing it. I can't believe that I get, I get to play in a band that worships Jesus. And I can't believe that I'm around people almost every day of my life that love the Lord. I can't believe that I have friends that want to hang out with me. And there's no drugs and alcohol involved in it. Just lots of coffee and food. <laughs> I can't believe that I've got a good staff. I can't believe that i got people that are in love with the Lord. I can't believe that we might not always get along. We might have arguments and discussions and disagreements. But at the end of the day, we are able to come together with one common mind, knowing that we are ready to serve Jesus every Friday and Tuesday. We are ready to serve the Lord, and it doesn't matter what comes at us. We're here to serve God. Amen. That's right. 
We sing a song here at Broken Chains called uh, Take My Life. And every time I sing that song, I'm reminded of God did take my life. A couple months back, anybody, anybody's going, that's me, Peabop, you're talking right to my heart tonight. Great if I am, and if I'm not, that's okay. I used to worry about that, Chris. I used to worry about what people thought about what I said. I don't anymore. But here's the thing. Got on my uh, Jackson High School yearbook Facebook page. And this girl named Chris Kruger was on my page. And she said to me, she said, what are you doing now? And I still got to go kind of go, she's not going to believe this. I told her I was a pastor. She said, you know, you got me all the way through high school. You made me laugh every day. A couple other guys in my high school would say, you know what, you were just a class clown. You were funny. You made me laugh. And there's days that I go, that's so sad because I don't remember any of it. And that's sad, and that's also good, because i got to tell you, there's days that I look back at my life, I'm not the same guy, and that's okay. And it's not because I got fatter and bigger, it's because i got a, I got a God that I serve, and I'm not the same guy. I'm not miserable anymore. I'm not smoking dope to be happy. I'm not the guy who would go out and figure out a way of, of sneaking outside with my one hitter, figuring out a way I could light it up just to make it through the rest of the day. Amen. I'll say that one again. Yeah. Now there's days that I'm looking on how to get away from some of you guys so I can go read my Bible and pray. Yeah. I love you guys. I really do. But i got to tell you guys something. I am happier today than I have ever been in my whole entire life. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about the first days of my, my life as a different God. I think about the day that I accepted the Lord. And i got to tell you something. If you think there's no God, if some of you have heard this for eight years and that's okay. Because I think there's somebody here that needs to hear this tonight. First day of my con conversion to Christianity, first day of meeting my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, went home sober after drinking Jack Daniels all day. I had a touch by an angel experience that nobody can ever take away from me. Drank all day. I was miserable. I was belligerent. I was moody. Some would say I'm moody now. <laughs> no. Stop it, Chuck. <laughs> But I gotta tell you, that day I was out of it. I was smashed. I was, I was everything you can think of. And I had God literally come down. God, the God of this universe, come down into my car and breathe life into me. I went home, was able to talk to my mom for the first time, sober. She understood me. And I have not went a day in my life without thanking God for what He's done for me. Because my life back then is over. I'm done. History, dead. I think about all the people that I have got to meet going through this place over the years. I think about some of them who are, are still serving God. I think about some of the people that have come through the doors and Hey, we're not a great big huge church, but I gotta tell you what, I can tell you this, I have felt God's presence just about every service in this place since I started. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't feel God's presence. So no, it's not religion, it's relationship. And some of us have got to get that through our minds. That this is not about how many days you can come to church service, but this is about a relationship with a God who cares about you. That a God who reached out his arms, stretched out his arms and died for you. It's about an everyday relationship. It's about an awesome thing called Christianity that's like we were talking in the office. It's so easy 
that everybody should be able to do it. It's not rocket science. Do you believe in me? Yes, I do. I believe in you and I believe in what you can do for me. I need you to ask me to come into your heart. I need you to make it real. I need you to check yourself and check your heart. You're going to have to die out of some things, probably everything. You're going to have to give me everything. You're going to have to worship me. You're going to have to give me control. Your life is over from this day forward. This is called exit to your life and enter the life of Jesus. You're going to become a disciple of mine. You really don't have to do a whole lot other than just listen. And that's where we all really kind of lose it, right there. <laughs> and how do we lose it? Because we're so ready just to talk all the time. <laughs> Diarrhea of the mouth, and you don't take the mouth of time to listen to your God, and you don't hear His voice because you're rambling so fast and so loud, it's like you've had seven energy drinks. <laughs> and I know the one that I'm looking at, and he knows the one I'm talking about. Yes. But we need to get in our minds that we just need to take the time to listen, talk, pray, but listen. Because the more we listen, the more God speaks to us. The more we allow Him to come into our life, the more He wants. The more He wants, the more we give. Let's have Jesus for every meal. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> you know, we do this song here from the Saints Church that I've said over and over and over again. I don't even like doing it. It's called Amazing Grace. And the reason I don't like doing it is because if you don't know what Amazing Grace is, how can you sing the song? Mm -hmm. But when you finally figure out what Amazing Grace is, you can't wait to sing it every week. When you finally figure out that you're free from your sin and you have amazing grace in your life, it's like, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, yeah! I want more of that! And I don't care whether we sing it with a thrash guitar or whether we sing it with hymnals. I'm going, yeah! Somebody needs to say amen to that. Amen. God has shown me the truth. I see clearly for the first time when I accepted Christ into my life. I am delivered. I am sanctified. I am chosen. I am a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I can worship the living God. Not a dead God. A living God. A God that has touched my life. A God that has given me purpose. A God that has given me a plan. A God who has shown me and spoke to me. A God who reveals Himself to me. We need to be shouting a hallelujah right there. Amen? Amen? I get to see people change right before my eyes. By my power? No, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you don't even, some of you don't even realize how much you changed. I see it. But I gotta tell you. You might have a little bit of change, but God is asking for big change from some of you. Tonight, God is asking for some, some of you for big change. Tonight, God is saying, are you ready to exit your life and let me enter fully? Tonight, God is saying, are you ready to die out to yourself and give me control? Tonight, God is saying to some of you, I'm asking for more, and are you willing to give it? I know I'm saying some of the same stuff over and over again. See, you got to understand, guys, when you accept Jesus Christ, it's just not a one-time prayer. We've been talking about this for the last few weeks. It's not just a one-time prayer. A one-time prayer is going to get you nowhere. A one-time prayer is saying, hey, Jesus, come in. Give it all. Okay. Where's the beer? <laughs> A one, you're laughing, but seriously, think about that for a moment. A one-time prayer is going to get you nowhere if you don't accept Him into your heart and die out. The road that I was on was death. But God straightened it. And He gave me a new one. 
The road that I was headed down was death. If I would have kept down the road, I would have been going through an intervention. The road that I was headed down was death. But God delivered me. The road that I was heading down in that car, waiting to buy my, my Marlboro Reds, was death. But God spoke to me. I don't know if God's going to give you a touch by an angel experience tonight. That's between, that's between Him and Him. <laughs> It might not be anything tonight. It might not, you know, it might not feel anything, but I'm asking you tonight, are you really seriously seeking after a true relationship with God? Are you seriously here because you want to know more about God? Are you seriously here because you need more of God? Or are you here just because there's nothing else to do on a Friday night? Because you're wasting my time and you're wasting your time. Because I'm not here. I'm not here to just to build build a mega church. I'm here to get people right with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's my job. <clears throat> Genesis 50-20 says this. The devil, this is the coat of many colors, Joseph, you intended harm to me, but God intended intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done within my life. God has a plan for you. What the devil meant for harm, this is basically paraphrased, but what the devil meant for harm, God meant for good. Stop blaming God for the things that are going on in your life and trust that your God's in control. Stop being mad for the things that you're on or in and give your life tonight to Him and let Him finally take the reins of your life. talking to somebody this week and they were like well you don't know what I'm going through you don't know where I'm at no but I can tell you what I've been through in the last couple many years I went through losing twins I went through cancer with my wife I went through horrendous junk been through many church splits <laughs> been through many crappy things that I wish I would knowing that I don't ever want to go through again but if I ever did have to go through any of those things again, I can tell you one thing for certain. The first thing I'm going to do is not throw my fist in the air all angry, but remembering that Jesus Christ is in control. Remembering that my God's got this. Remembering that the love of Jesus Christ that saved me 25 years ago or whatever it's been is still here today and still in control. God has transformed me. He reconciled my life. He's given me freedom. He's given me everything I asked for and then some. He loves me. He loves you. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. This is your night of freedom. This is your night of freedom. Last week during the intervention, I said to you that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God comes to give life. During the intervention, I begged you to get your lives right, to seek after God. I told you that it's not my job to make sure that your life is perfect. It's your, it's your job to make sure your life is on track. It's your job to seek after God. All my job is to challenge you to the cross. All my job is to do is to get you to a point where you're realizing that I need Jesus and that's all I want. Right now, there's somebody in here that their heart is pounding a thousand miles an hour. And you're too scared to take that plunge because your life might considerably change. And I would say to you, that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> it can take 25, 30 years, or it can take a blink of an eye. You can either give it all or give a little. You give a little, maybe we'll have a slow process with Jesus. <laughs> if you give it all, it's an instantaneous change that is the most incredible thing I could ever witness. Amen. It's not just because I'm 
That's the dog. <laughs> Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. <laughs> Transformation. Intervention. Life change. Life unexpected. Exit to my life and enter the life with Jesus. Well, Pastor Bob, you don't know what I've got planned for tonight. Well, maybe your plans need to change. It's time to read the book. It's time to seek after the God who created you. It's time to find out what He has for you. Some of you are called to be much more than you have allowed yourself to be. Jazz, you've heard this message how many times? And you're still here. <laughs> See, I can look out and I, I can tell you some of the people that are here tonight aren't going to get it. Don't really care. And you're going to end up back at the same place you were. You're going to go around the same mountain. Because us old guys like Kurt know what it's like to go around the same mountain many times. And he's not mad at me saying that because I've been his friend for a long time. We've seen people fall away, run away, run as fast as they can the other direction. And it's a losing battle because you've got nowhere to go. God sees it all, knows it all. So yes, we're going to have an altar call tonight. Yes, we're going to have an altar call tonight. That's where my prayer team members come running up here. Yes, we're going to have an altar call tonight. Little <laughs> 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 grace. That's right, I don't run very fast, do I? Don't say it anyway. Can I get a guy and a girl over here and a guy and a girl over here? Please. Or a girl, a girl, and a guy, and a guy, and a girl. <laughs> so can I get you guys to bow your heads, please? Nobody talking, nobody rambling around. Lord God, I'm going to say a different prayer than I've ever said before. Lord God, I'm asking you to break us. I'm asking, Lord God, I'm asking you, Lord God, for us to seek after who you are. I'm asking, Lord God, for a total transformation in hearts tonight. I'm asking, Lord God, that there's men and women in this house that know that they are called, but are too scared to answer the call. I'm asking, Lord God, for the pastors that are called, for the men and women that are called by you, that you've spoke to their hearts, and they know who they are. I would ask, Lord God, that you bring them forth, Lord Jesus. I would ask, Lord God, that they make a transformation altar call tonight. I would ask, Lord God, that they would not just come up to a green church altar tonight, that they would come in for transformation that only you can do, that you do surgery tonight, Lord. That you change them, Lord God, into the awesome life that you've given me, Lord Jesus, that they can have, knowing that you're in control 24-7. And then no matter what comes their way, that they understand that God's in control. So Lord God, the young people tonight that have run, that are running so fast the other direction, I ask that you have them run straight to this altar tonight and straight to you. I would ask, Lord God, you just start tugging on hearts. Lord God, you know who they are, and they know who they are. It's time for change, church. It's time for us to exit our lives and have the life of Jesus Christ, the transformation power of Christ to come into your life. That we would die out to us and give our lives totally, surrendering everything to you. Tonight, Lord God, you have your will and your way. And I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> so tonight, here's the question. If that was you, could you stand... If, if God is talking to you tonight, and God is saying, you can keep standing, Beth, if you're standing up on it. If God is saying to you tonight, that was me, Pastor Bob, I need to change my life. 
I know that God has got a calling on my life, and I know that I need to do something differently, and I don't totally understand what I'm going to this altar tonight for, but I know that my heart is pounding, and I know that God has called me. Did you come up here and get prayer? Please. And I don't want to embarrass you, but I can tell you that God is speaking to my heart, and I know who some of you are. And it's not because I want to be mean and yell and scream and say, get your butt up here. But there are some of you guys that have been running for a long, long, long time. It's time to stop running. And I'll say this, if you're on my leadership team, I will call you out because I know who you are. And if it's anybody here tonight that is not coming up here because you think you're bigger than better than anybody else, boo on you. Boo on you. Anybody else? Old, young, skinny, fat, who's ever called, who's ever got a calling on their life, who's ever known that they've been running for a long time. Tonight's your night, transformation night. Love you, Lord God. We just thank you tonight, Lord God. I know that you're pulling on some hard strings tonight, Lord Jesus. We just want to get it right with you, Lord. We thank you for your awesome calling. Please answer the call of Christ. 